We've heard statistics over and over again when it comes to retaining and engaging millennials in the workplace. And this week on Hard Facts, that's exactly what I wanna talk about. One key tip you can take and institute in your business to help make sure your millennial workforce not only wants to stay, but can continue to grow within your organization. I mean, we know the statistics. 43% of millennials will stay less than two years within your organization, and less than 28% of them anticipate staying five years or more. Numbers I hope you can change. When looking at statistics around why millennials are leaving their existing position and finding new opportunities, things from citing for looking for a socially responsible organization, looking for not a dead end job, an organization that supports growing new skills and changing career fields are all items that are commonly cited. But did you know that being stagnant within a position is the number one reason that millennials tend to leave organizations? It's because there's no opportunity for growth or support within the organization to continue to advance. So let's change that together. So if you are a manager, a leader of an organization, I know it can be incredibly challenging, trust me, I feel you here, to find time to be able to work one-on-one -on -one and create advancement plans for each of your team members. But if you find yourself saying that it is too hard, too difficult, and I don't have time to do it, then honestly, you should get out of the game because you are part of the problem. The reason that millennials are moving and switching jobs is because as an organization, we're not prioritizing their career ladder, advancement through our company, and how they can continue for our companies to grow and build. So I want to talk about two things that you need to institute in your business or thoroughly have a process for if you don't already. Now, number one is something we've covered on previous Hard Facts episodes before, and it's the need to establish KPIs and KRAs for your existing team. So key performance indicators and key performance areas that show these team members how they are progressing through their necessary skill set within their organization currently. So are they fulfilling all of the needs for the existing job that they hold within your organization? organization. And in this though, don't just grade them on those things for today. Create a plan to get to where they want to be tomorrow. And we need to have those conversations. So it's important that where they want to go fits within your organizational structure to an extent. Because you know what? We need to be realistic as managers and leaders within our organization and say not everybody will be here forever. But it is my job to make this team member the best individual they can be within my organization. And once they're ready to fly and go somewhere else, I want them to be fully prepared to take advantage of that opportunity as well. So how can we take their interests, their passions, and put that within our organization and their growth plans? So let me tell you a little bit of a story and an example you can use. All right, for example, let's say you are a healthcare business and you have a team member on your staff that is solely responsible for marketing communication to attract new enrollees. Now with this, let's say that individual's growth plan is to eventually be a writer and push content out there, but in your organization, you don't have that copywriter fulfillment position available. How can you change their growth plan? So instead of just having them fill their KPIs and KRAs of pushing content out there, you can now take the desire to write and incorporate that and how they can hit that next year once they've accomplished all of their existing job proficiencies. So adding new opportunities to their existing job role within your organization is incredibly important and it encourages them to do better to hit that rung. So in this example, by including that opportunity to create copy, put content out there, it directly correlated with an existing aspect of that person's organizational goal, which was to syndicate content and get new enrollees. How? Well, they wrote content that would attract new people to their healthcare product or service that was imperative to engaging them, creating a conversation, and then ultimately enrolling them. So in synopsis of number one is making sure that you're having clear KPIs and KREs and you're communicating those to your team members. Come back once a year, twice a year, three, four times a year, as much is manageable to make sure you're going over those together. They're evaluating themselves and you're evaluating them and you're identifying that next opportunity, that next point that they can work towards to make your organization and their growth even better together. Now, I know I said do the KPIs and KRAs one to four times a year, but if that's the only time you're meeting with your team, let me tell you, they're still gonna leave. Because at the end of the day, creating a structure where management isn't tangible, where individuals are five people away from a communication chain that can help them grow, you're going to find a decrease in success here. What you need to be doing is have opportunities, whether it is a one-on-one, -on -one, a formal or informal meeting, once a month at minimum, if not every week or every other week, that you are touching base with your employees. Hell, if Gary Vee can meet with select employees throughout his organization, you can find time to do it. 
So let me tell you a little bit of a story. When I was thinking about how can I make sure I'm really having these conversations with my team and showing them that I am prioritizing their growth plans and their future goals, whether here at Potrat or not, I said, you know what, in a lot of our conversations, because we represent the division that services our clients, we have a 30 minute meeting every week and we spend maybe five minutes talking about them and their career advancement and challenges that they're having outside of their client workload. That wasn't enough. Instead, it was being deprioritized and we really weren't finding that we could create success together. So we're doing coffee chats. Now, I don't know about you, but an excuse to get out of the office and have a little bit of coffee and some fresh air until probably winter are all great things in my book. So I'm going to actually share with you you not only a KPI document that you can use within your organization, but a quick worksheet I put together for what I like to refer to as Potrat's Coffee Chats. So these are the opportunity for me to get together with my team once a month for a quick cup of coffee where we get out of the office and we're able to go through this document that helps us say, hey, what are we looking to achieve to fulfill your existing position? And what are some of your future goals that we're going to create within our organization and we're working towards? What are those deadlines and how are we going to accomplish them? Keyword together. So I know I sound like I'm on a ramp, but this is something I am incredibly passionate about because we can make our millennial workforce work for us if we work for them. So don't forget to check out the downloads that come with this week's episode of Hard Facts. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or any of our other social platforms, one of two ways you can get this content. Shoot me an email at the email on the screen, which is Hard Facts, or head over to our website, Potrats NY, where you'll be directed over to the free resources. So that's all for this episode of Hard Facts. I hope you'll like, comment, or share this video if you found it useful. And keep coming back by subscribing to this YouTube channel for more episodes every week.